What is up, ladies and gents, boys and girls? Welcome back to another episode of Big 50 Fishing. I want to thank y'all for tuning into my channel today. I really appreciate it very much. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss any of my upcoming content. Hit that notification bell also. Today, we're gonna to be talking about August and the top baits to be thrown in the month of August. August is the dog days of summer, it's hot. Can't even begin to explain how hot it is. All right, so we're gonna be going over some baits that you can throw, the things you wanna to target to throw these baits around. And before we even get into that, I wanna show you guys something. As you can see on my head, we got the big 50 fishing hats some things i like about it some things i don't like about it i don't like that the wording is white so i'll probably get that switch to black i don't have a for sure date yet when merch will be available but i will have that soon and i will keep everybody posted on it we're probably gonna have hats uh you can order it in different colors but it will have the same patch and same logo uh you can order hats we're probably gonna have shirts probably gonna have key lanyards maybe even rubber bracelets something like that stickers but whenever i get on top of that and we get a date on when to expect that i will be sure to let everybody know let's go ahead and get this video started y'all come along with us all right guys first things first we all know it's hot we know that water temperature is going to go up and when it's hot like that those bass are going to be looking for what shade or deep water all right and what produces shade docks uh overhanging trees uh the color line and we'll go over what that is in a few minutes and deep water all right so with that being said it's going to be easy to pretty much predict where the fish will be at you know and target those areas instead of wasting a lot of time trying to find the fish you know target those hard shade lines and stuff like that underneath docks uh deeper water so we got a couple baits that we're gonna go over and what i will be looking for and throwing that specific bait. All right, so starting this video off, I got two baits that I'll go with. One would be the frog, one would be a buzz bait. It could either be a popping frog, it could be a standard frog, buzz bait, whatever type of buzz bait you like to throw. All right, and with this frog and this buzz bait, with the frog, I can skip this thing under uh, overhanging trees, I can skip it under docks. You can do the same with a buzz bait, but it's going to be a little difficult. I mean, if you're really good at skipping, by all means, do what you gotta do. But I'm gonna throw this frog under tree lines. I'm gonna throw it under docks. Sometimes you might get it outside of the grass edge, uh, grass mats, throw it right on the outside of it, and you probably could get a hit. Same thing with the buzz bait. You know, if you can get that buzz bait under a dock, go ahead and get it up under there. You'll be surprised. If you can get it back there at the back of those trees, get it under there. You'll be surprised. The frog and the buzz bait will be my top two baits that I will start with in the morning. All right. And what I like to do with my frogs with that skirt, I don't have it done on this one, but I like to trim my skirts short. All right. And by me doing that, when I'm walking that frog, that frog stays in one spot walking for a longer period of time. It stays in that, that strike zone for a longer period. Instead of leaving it alone, when you walk it, it moves across the water. But when you cut that skirt a little short, it turns side to side or pops in one specific spot for a little bit longer. That buzz bait, we all know that's a steady retrieve. Uh, I throw my frogs on 80 pound uh, suffix 832. I throw my buzz baits on 30 pound suffix. Um, I like to throw that buzz bait on that 30. You know, I don't want a line that's too heavy and you know, it's not as buoyant, it's not as parabolic. You know, the thick of the line, it, is, it, it bends a little harder. You know, so with that 30 pound line, I got a little free rein and it kind of gives that buzz bait that natural flotation look. You know, it don't have heavy line pulling it down or anything like that. So base number one will be a frog and a buzz bait. You can even substitute a whopper flopper if you can get it under, under overhangs and stuff like that. Um, it's not quite time for a popper yet, I feel. Maybe September, October-ish. But we'll get to that later down the line. So number one would be a frog and a buzz bait. All right, moving on. Let's go on to bait number two. Before we go to bait number two, let's talk about the color line because bait number two goes with the color line. The color line is this. When you're on the water and you can see the bottom through the water, if that bottom's three feet down and you can see that light colored bottom, 
and you're coming out as you're coming out where that water turns dark to where you can't see the bottom anymore that is the color line that's actually a shade line that bass will use it can go from you coming from the bank out into open water and you can see that bank all the way out and where that water starts to turn dark within that darkness of where it starts to about five ten feet past that that right there's a the color line running up and down on the contour of the lake all right so this is where bait number two will come into play and bait number two will be crankbaits and i have three specific crankbaits that i would throw one would be the kvd 3xd 6xd depending on how deep your water is and how far your color line goes out my next bait would be a square bill crankbait and besides that square bill crankbait my last crankbait will be the rappler dt6 dt8 or dt10 right here is the dt6 uh we got that square bill and then we got the six all right so i would take those baits and throw it down the color line and work it right back down that color line go parallel with it you know uh, you could also try big swim baits i don't have any swim baits with me but you can try big swim baits mag drafts hard swim baits uh they all should work and it, it, it's right or not right now is the time well most of the time you'll probably be on the water by yourself a lot of people not gonna want to they're not gonna go out in the heat they don't want to go out in the heat so most of the time you'll have a, a big area to yourself because a, a lot of people don't want to go outside in this heat and you can throw these baits all around the southern region not quite north uh you can't throw it around the north right now but it's more predominantly the south right now so i take that crane bait fire that thing out there down that color line and bring it back that that provides a shade line for those fish also uh run it on the outside of docks if you want to run it on the outside of grass uh it's it's a vary of things that you can do to catch fish around this time of year like i said the fish are pretty much predictable at this point uh instead of wasting a lot of time to find fish you're just pretty much looking for shade if there's shade most of the time there'll be a fish there you're not gonna catch a fish every cast there you know but if there's shade most of the time there's probably a fish there especially around docks especially around overhanging trees uh sometimes even a log a log in the water those fish are a, a, a stick to that log you know and it, it provides a little bit of shade it might not be ex exactly what they're looking for or exactly what you're looking for but it does provide shade depending on the angle of the sun so going over that again crankbaits 6xd square bill rappler dt6 dt8 dt10 whatever you feel most most comfortable with go with it uh hard plastic swim baits big swim baits mag drafts anything like that anything in that category throw it along that color line all right guys moving on to the last thing around this time of year in august when that sun reaches its maximum point in the sky its highest point in the sky its maximum temp temperature for the day there's two baits that i would throw and this would be offshore docks grass lines whatever and that would be a shaky head and a drop shot shake your head in the drop shot if you're offshore fishing man those bass are in deep water they're down to the bottom we're talking 20 30 40 maybe even 50 60 feet of water all right man you can throw that shake your head down there throw that drop shot down there work it back to your slow you're gonna get a bite you're gonna get a bite especially if it's a deep water point if it's a deep water point man those bass are gonna crowd around it and you can throw that shaky head out there and just work that thing back to you. Shell beds that are in deep water. Uh, you can throw that shaky head outside of docks. You can skip it under docks. And that works also with a drop shot. Mm, I would say you'll probably get hung up a couple times outside a dock or under a dock, but it can be done. For me, I would personally throw these baits offshore or uh, on the outside of a dock, but not the side where the sun is on a dock. I would throw it on the opposite side where the shade is. And nine times out of 10, you will generate a bite. You will generate a bite on that shaky head or that drop shot. 
specifically offshore for me. I, I would rather throw it offshore. I wouldn't really, I would throw it around the docks. I've done it before, but I would prefer offshore. And sometimes I feel, I don't know how other people feel, but I feel that offshore bites tend to be bigger fish. Uh, I don't know, like I said, I don't know how you feel about that or how other people would feel about that. But from my fishing experience, when I fish offshore, I tend to get bigger bites than being inshore. Inshore, a lot of smaller bass are out there. A lot of small bass, I feel, don't have the energy to swim out in the, the, the deeper water or where there's strong current at and out there and stuff or big waves and everything. So I feel offshore bites are bigger fish. You know, so those will be my baits for August. So if you want me to go over those baits again, we have a frog, we have a buzz bait. We have crank baits, which would be the square bill, DT6, DT8, and DT10. Um, and we have a 6XD. Now, if you have water that goes way deeper than that, for example, around me, we have Toledo Bend. Running a 10XD in Toledo Bend is almost a norm around this time i mean it's so deep so a 10 xd wouldn't be a problem those hard baits hard swim baits uh the soft plastic swim baits those work also um shake your head and a drop shot so those are my top baits for august hopefully you guys put those baits to use we all still learn stuff every day you learn and you live you know so thank you guys for tuning into my channel thank you guys for listening Hopefully you take these things that I'm telling you and go catch some fish.